Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Joe Diaz. I am currently one of eight Corel Draw Masters, and part of my responsibilities as a Corel Draw Master is to create uh, video tutorials and webinars, um, written tutorials, and and other uh, learning content for people interested in using Corel Draw. Uh, so this particular lesson is going to be about uh, creating vector illustrations using CorelDRAW. I'm currently using CorelDRAW X7, and uh, I'm going to show you uh, how to create stuff like this. Um, but what I want to really do is I want to start with a, kind of a new type of um, uh, process that I've been kind of playing around with. And it's more of like a geometric illustration made up of you know triangles and rectangles and things like that so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a new file and uh, I am going to I've got a dual monitor set up you're only seeing the one monitor but what I'm just gonna do is click and drag a photo from my um, uh, my file folder here and drag that photo and let go and drop it into uh, Corel Draw. Uh, this is a friend of mine. Uh, she used to be in a band with me and she uh, moved to California to pursue an acting career. So she was nice enough to send me a headshot. And uh, I'm going to use that to demonstrate how to create these illustrations. So the first thing I want to do is kind of get this photo prepped um, and get the colors and the lighting the way I want it. <clears throat> so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll I'll duplicate this the photo and I will keep the original kind of off to the side because I may need to come back to that at some point. The other thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to duplicate it one more time. I'll just move this over here for the time being. I'm going to select this image and I'm going to go to bitmap image adjustment lab. Uh, I am going to then take the temperature and kind of cool it down a bit and maybe adjust the contrast a little and adjust the brightness a little. We're just going to kind of play with it, get the way we want it. Maybe the saturation, turn that up. All right, so she kind of looks purple now, but uh, it'll make sense here in a second. So we're going to hit OK. And I'm going to duplicate one more time. And I'm going to lay this one on top of that. You notice this is kind of snapping to that photo. That's the uh, the snap feature. Uh, you can get to that by going to View. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I was right the first time. View, Snap to, and then make sure that Objects is checked, or Alt-Z, which is what I use the majority of the time. So we're going to snap that there. And I'm going to go to Bitmap Image Adjustment Lab again. Now this time I'm going to warm it up. We're going to get some kind of nice and warm colors going here. And we're going to do the saturation. And we're going to adjust the contrast. <clears throat> and hit OK. So now I'm going to go with this top image selected. I'm going to select the transparency tool. And I'm going to go like that. So I'm trying to kind of make it look like there's a blue light coming from this way and maybe a warm orangish red light coming from that way. And the reason I'm doing that is it's just going to make when we actually start creating the vector shapes, it's just going to give it some, it's just going to make it a bit more interesting. So we're going to select all of that. And if you wanted to, you could duplicate it and put this off to the side just in case you want to come back to it. If you mess up, you can always go back. You can do hit undo, but um, sometimes it's faster if you can go all the way back to to uh, to that, that uh, thing that you duplicated there. So I'm going to go to bitmap. I'm going to uh, select convert to bitmap. So this, what I'm essentially doing at this point in time is flattening um, both of these images into one image. So I'm going to hit bitmap. I'm going to hit convert to bitmap. I'm going to maybe keep my resolution at 300 dpi. 
and uh, yeah, the rest of that's good. So we're gonna hit OK. So now it's I can't I can't grab that image on top. Now it's one image. And the reason I did that is because I want to again go up to Bitmap Image Adjustment Lab, and now I want to work with the blue and the red lighting that I've done. Um, I want to crank this saturation up big time. We want it to be really intense. And I want to do the contrast up a lot, quite a bit too. And uh, I think I want to maybe cool it down just a little bit more. There we go. So if we were just manipulating photographs here, this kind of would be a little too intense. Um, but it will start making sense the farther I get. So just bear with me here. We're going to hit OK. And there we go. So now what I want to do is actually start creating the shapes. And to do that, uh, what you want to do is use your freehand tool. So the freehand tool is found right here. And I want to, a lot of times what I like to do is start with, um, you know, around the nose, you know, the, the actual features that stand out the most. So the mouth, the eyes, the eyebrows, things like that. So we might start first with the eyebrows here. And just kind of by clicking once and letting go and then clicking again, double clicking, snapping one line to the next. Uh, you can kind of quickly create these shapes. And if you want to move nodes around, you can go to the shape tool and grab a node and move it. So what we're doing is we want to use all straight lines. We don't want to get, and if we can reduce the amount of nodes, um, uh, that's, that's ideal because we, we want it to be, we don't want it to be super detailed. We want, we want it to be nice and geometric. So. I'm going to create more lines. And I think that looks better that way. So you just kind of keep working your way around. Let's hit this eye real quick. Now don't worry about closing shapes. So if I go into my wireframe here, <clears throat> this is actually a closed shape. So if I were to add fill to that shape, um, you can see it fills it completely. Now this shape is not closed because I've started it here and I ended it here. So if I were to add fill there, it shows that the fill is there, but it won't actually show it on the screen until I close that shape. And you can close shapes by hitting this close curve or by going back to your freehand tool and just connecting the dots. But uh, so you can see now it's got fill. So I'm going to undo that and then uh, get rid of the uh, the fill that I applied to it. Uh, so don't worry too much about closing shapes at this point in the process. It's not really that important. Um, the main thing we want to do is we just want to create these vector uh, lines and uh, kind of get this thing roughed out. Oops. And we'll do the same thing over here on this eye. Start with the eyeball here, the iris.
And so when I'm working on this, uh, I may uh, speed up the recording um, to kind of get through so you're not, you know, sitting here forever watching me do this. This is the first time I've worked on this particular illustration. I haven't done this beforehand. So you're seeing me work through this process like I would any other uh, any other project, um, starting from scratch, uh, using a photo and just kind of building onto it. So if I uh, stop talking for a while, what I'll end up doing and um, after I get this thing all recorded is I'll speed up uh, the parts where I'm not talking. So you don't have to, uh, you know, sit and watch, you know, a, an hour and a half long video. We'll try to shorten it up for you. Now, sometimes what you may want to do is take the, the background image that you're working over top of, um, and you may want to go to uh, your transparency tool and go to uniform transparency and just kind of dull it down a little bit so you can see your line work a little bit better. Um, once you start getting into the dark areas, especially, you start to kind of lose where your lines are. Um, at this point in time, we're not worrying about color, so we don't really need the intense color. Um, that uh, we started with. So uh, if you wanted to do that. Now another thing you could do is you can select the image uh, and also lock it so that you don't accidentally select it when you're trying to select one of these shapes here. So we're gonna hit, uh, we're gonna right click on the image and you want to go to lock object. And so now we can't accidentally click on it. The only way you can, you can select it is if you right click on it again and hit unlock object. As you can see at this point in time, what I'm starting to do is uh, just you, you kind of you work uh, from the more detailed parts to the least detailed parts. So at this point in time, you know, we're starting to kind of look for um, shading areas where there's um, kind of differences in shade. Um, and I'm going to go in here. I'm going to connect this because I think that would make creating this shape a lot easier. You want to make sure that things that nodes are, are you know, connected to each other. So um, you want to make sure this node is connected to this line and this node is connected to that line. So there's a highlight on her chin. I want to make sure I get that. Okay, so at this point, we've got kind of the rough uh, line work done. Um, what you want to do now is we, we essentially want to kind of focus in and start creating. Um, in this case, I want to create just triangles. So I want to create, I mean, you could make uh, four sided shapes, you know, um, six sided shapes, anything you want, but, or, you know, variations of. Uh, different sided shapes, but what I want to do is try to keep with triangles. Um, it's just kind of a decision I made in this particular case. So 
Um, and the the detailed parts like the eyes and the mouth and uh, you know the nose, um, we might want to you know the triangles are probably going to be pretty small uh, and tight. And the once you get into like the parts uh, where you know it kind of opens up a little bit, like the forehead or the cheeks. Uh, our triangles are most likely going to be quite a bit larger. Our shapes are going to uh, be larger. Um, and that's, I do that because the, you want the, uh, this, per, you know, the eyes and the mouth and the nose and stuff to, to um, be recognizable. And if they were made up of large triangles, they may not have quite the detail that we want. Um, but these big open areas, you can kind of keep those uh, as larger shapes and uh, it still, it lends itself to kind of a, a nice little effect to see it kind of start with these little triangles and then build out into bigger triangles. So um, I'm going to start here with the eye and uh, I'm just going to kind of connect the dots. You don't have to, um, you want to make sure that you're clicking on the nodes and not missing them too. And that, that'll make more sense a little later on once they get to the next step, but um, just make sure you're hitting those nodes. Make sure your snap to feature is turned on. Also in a case like this, you'll see um, this kind of uh, shape here. We've got a lot of light over here and a lot of dark over here. So naturally, if I took this line here, that would make more sense. Whereas if I went here, um, you know, it doesn't quite, I, I mean, it would work, but it wouldn't, wouldn't look quite as nice, I don't think so.
right, so we're to a pretty good point now where we can move on to the next step. Um, the next step is um, kind of an important one. Uh, the reason why I told you earlier to not worry so much about you know closing the shape is because of uh, in preparation of this st step it, it wouldn't have been necessary to do that so that's where this step comes into play so I am going to select everything this part is important and you want to group it so I hit control G is the same thing as grouping so now I can grab that and got our our two shapes here um, I'm gonna also unlock the back object here and now I am going to use the intersect or I'm sorry the smart fill tool which is the uh, the main part of this next step so we're gonna select that and we're gonna just start filling in these spots here and this is why we didn't have to close in the shapes because that's what this is doing we're basically just filling this up with color it's all blue for the time being but we'll change that So, we've got that part done. Uh, now what we want to do is we want to pull out the original uh, line art that we did. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and select this shape and then select again. And that, that's how you select things behind shapes that are in front of it. So by holding Alt you can select a shape that's behind another shape. So I'm going to grab this entire grouped wireframe that we created and pull that off the side. We'll keep it just in case we need it again, but we probably won't. So um, now I've got all these individual shapes that um, are all filled in with this blue color. So the next part of the process is to take all of that to um, what you want to do now is make sure you don't have the picture behind there selected. And then we want to get rid of our fill. So we're going to right click. I'm sorry, we want to keep the outline. We're going to left click on the um, the no color uh, out of our palette there. And so now we get rid of all the color, but we still have our black lines. So kind of we're kind of back to where we started, but uh, now we at least we can fill these in with color. So. Um, the next part is we want to select this and we want to get rid of that transparency that we added earlier because we don't need it anymore. So I want to bring it back to that. Okay. And uh, now we start adding color. And to do that, what we want to do is we want to select the eye drop, the color eyedropper tool. And this next part's pretty easy. It's just uh, a little time consuming. So you take the color eyedropper tool and uh, you'll see you've got these selections where you can kind of um, pick an average of you know five pixels by five pixels versus one pixel by one pixel so um, I like to kind of keep it small that way I can select different shades within here because there's a lot of different shades to pick from we got real light here and then real dark here so I usually try to go from the middle though 
So we're going to select it, and then immediately we're giving our or given our paint bucket um, tool here. So we'll just drop that color in there. And if you hold your shift key, you can toggle between the two, the eyedropper and the paint bucket. So I'm going to eyedropper it and paint it. And eyedropper it and paint it. And eyedropper it and paint it. Now sometimes what you might want to do is get some variation going. So uh, we might want to go with a little bit darker shade here than what I originally picked. And maybe a lighter shade here. So, um, you know, obviously the more you do that, the the more rugged the um, it's going to appear when we take the outlines out. So you know you want to try to avoid making the contrast too different, unless that's the look you're going for. Okay, so now what we do is we're going to move this out of the way for the time being. I'm just going to flip it like that so I can make sure I got all of my colors filled in. That looks like I did. So now I'm going to select this and get rid of my outlines. And so that's pretty close to what we're wanting to get. You can see I missed a few. So I have to go in there and fix that it was that and that and that so now what we can do is create a background color here and I'm gonna use that color And it looks like it fades to, so I'm using the, um, the interactive fill tool to do this. I'm just going to create um, a few nodes here. And you can select down on this node color and then use the eyedropper tool to kind of grab colors from the photo. And if you want to add another node with a new color, you can. So we're going to do something kind of like that. And then I like to go up to this um, uh, smooth. It kind of 
does a better job of gradients. And then we'll throw that to the back. Shift page down, we'll, we'll take a shape and take it all the way to the back of the, the workspace. And then we can take this photo here and move it off to the side. Now you'll notice that uh, depending on how you have this rendered, um, it may not be a big deal for, for some shapes, but you'll see that, or for some projects, you'll see that there's um, some kind of, of the dark color shining through. Uh, or kind of seeping through the cracks here. So one way you can fix that is you can take the entire thing minus the, I'm holding down the shift key to unselect that background color. So now I've got just the illustration selected. I'm going to group that. Then I'm going to duplicate it. And then what I'm going to do is move that up just a teensy bit and then move it over just a little bit. And so what that did is it it's there's two illustrations laying over top of each other. They're stacked on top of each other. And uh it it, it just does a good job of hiding those lines. So that's kind of a um a quick little tutorial. Now we could have spent more time given the the shapes a little more um, adding more shapes will give it more detail so like uh, right here where it goes from light to medium to dark we could have done a little bit more of that in here and that might have helped uh, give it a little more um, detail so but you know the the cool thing about these types of illustrations are you can choose to do a lot of detail or little detail Okay, so I took a little uh, break from this and um, uh, went home for the night and came back in the morning to kind of finish it up. Uh, a lot of times, uh, especially when you're doing kind of larger projects or illustrations, it's nice to step away from it, um, recharge your batteries, and then come back at it. And a lot of times when you, uh, when you return, you start noticing things that you might have wanted to change. Um, so... I finished this up. Uh, you can tell there's been a few additions. Um, the first would be, uh, I'll zoom in here. Uh, there's a bit of a background now. There's uh, some kind of geometric shapes, uh, wedges and stuff for the background. Uh, I also have these kind of floating pieces, kind of look like they're breaking off from the illustration. And then these kind of, uh, you know, color flares. Um, so if I go in, I've actually power clipped this into a, a square, um, just to kind of crop it out. But if I press control, I can click into that power clip and you can see, I put a little bit of shade at the bottom. This is where the blue line. This is where the, uh, the actual, uh, power clipped, uh, cropped line would be. Um, I also added a... Uh, a red glow here. Um, and uh, there's a blue glow here. And that's pretty easy to do, so I'll show you real quick. Um, if you create a circle and apply a color to it, so in this case we'll do light blue. I'm going to get rid of my outline. And then I'm going to use the transparency tool. And... Uh, I'm going to select the elliptical fountain transparency. And so I've created a, a blue um, blue glow effect, basically. Um, but what you want to do is actually go back into your transparency tool with that shape still selected and maybe try out add. So add kind of... Uh, will add color to the colors that are behind it rather than creating an overlay. At the same time, you could do subtract if you wanted to. Um, I chose to go with add. And here's how it looks with red or with yellow or with green. So you can kind of play around with that, but um, 
I kind of ended up with this. I wanted to keep this dark up here and kind of have a, a red light source from here and a blue light source coming there. So and that's what I ended up with. So I want to switch gears for a second and uh, I opened up this other file. This is a project that uh, I created uh, using the same technique. Um, you can see some differences. Um, one of the main ones, uh, instead of doing uh, having the shapes get larger around the cheeks and the forehead, like I said before, um, I kept them kind of small um, and similar in size to some of the other details. Um, and as you can see, that kind of creates more of a, a rough uh, texture to it. Um, in this case, it works really well because this is, uh, obviously, this is Leonard Nimoy as Spock. And um, this was uh, an image from one of the later Star Trek movies. So he's a bit older then. And I feel like having that texture kind of lends itself well uh, to, you know, an older male. Um but, you know, you can just, uh, if you're ever doing this, uh, doing your own project, you can kind of uh, make your own decision as far as what, what style you're going for. But this just gives you an example of the differences. Um, you'll also notice that uh, I kind of created, a, I used a star map. I found a star map online, um, downloaded a... Uh, uh, a vector version of it and uh, did kind of an overlay uh, to kind of go with this kind of star Star Trek theme. Um, this whole thing was created for uh, a charity contest that I did over the summer. Uh, I want to take a look at another design here I've created. This is a design we did, uh, I did for a mural. Um, that was painted at the American Sign Museum in Cincinnati. And I wanted to show you this because uh, this gives you an idea of um, working with a photo to create an illustration and then also working with a hand-drawn illustration uh, and using that to, to build from. Um, in this particular case, uh, the worker here was drawn with pencil um, I actually used my brother as a, to a model as far as kind of getting the pose right. So we took a picture, a few pictures of him to, to kind of work from, uh, as a reference. And then I drew this with a pencil on paper, scanned it into Corel Draw. Um, and to do that, you go to file and acquire image. And then if you have a scanner select or hooked up to your computer, which I don't in this case, but on our other one we do, uh, you, would, you would hit acquire. And that's how you can scan in an image. So um, that's kind of how it ended up. And then I made it transparent and actually kind of drew over top of it. So you're here again using the freehand tool. Um, you can kind of click and draw and then once you know you kind of go around the uh, the entire image you can come back in and you can delete nodes all I'm doing is hit and delete to delete a node you can also add nodes by double clicking on a line and remove that same node by double clicking on that node um, but you can kind of work around the image and uh, the sketch is mainly meant as a a foundation, like a, a reference as far as, I mean, I don't have to follow it exact, and I usually don't, but it gets me in the ballpark. And so that's how you get something like this. So this is all created in vector um, using that sketch. And you can see, I, you know, the face is quite a bit different now. Um, we've got more detail I added more shapes once you get kind of the the base of it um, the base shadow and the, the highlight then you can kind of come in and, and make up medium tones um, for a project like this because this is gonna end up be a uh, becoming a mural I wanted to make sure that my color palette for this project was small because that essentially means there's less paint to mix when I'm actually painting the mural um, 
and uh, it just it makes the process or the project go uh, that much quicker. Um, when it comes time to actually paint this mural, what we do is we actually print this on a projection, a piece of clear material. Uh, we just run it through our desktop printer. Or we can create large patterns, uh, which we run off of our wide format printer. Um, either way, what I do is I select the entire design. Uh, I give everything an outline. And then I turn everything white. Uh, and then you'll probably have to go in and take some of these gradients, these transparent gradients, and, and adjust those. But at the end of the day, if I were to print this out as a pattern or as a transparency, um, as a pattern, I can use it to make a pounce uh, pattern from it. And a pounce pattern is a machine that kind of pokes, like burns, uh, uh, burns little holes in here so that uh, we can put the pattern up against the wall and then we use a, a bag full of, uh, you know, chalk. So if it's a light wall, it would be blue chalk um, or black charcoal. And if it's a dark wall, we would use white chalk. But we we kind of dab that bag of chalk against the uh, against the pattern, and the chalk goes through those little tiny holes, and it transfers that pattern. Um, or that design from the pattern to the wall. And projecting is a little bit easier. Obviously, you print it on a clear piece of material and you put it on an overhead projector and then you can blow it up onto the wall. And then you you uh, use Sharpies or, you know, black markers to, to draw the design onto the wall using the projector as a guide. But uh, to be able to take the color out of it and create the lines is very helpful. Um, and then you have the color version, which you can use as a guide, you know, and it's essentially a paint by number from there. This is kind of a quick explanation of how we can use illustrations to create larger projects and then use those to create uh, something like a mural. Um, this design, I created this for the contest uh, this year, the Corel Draw Internet, the International Corel Draw uh, Design Contest, and um, I wanted to show you this because uh, this is a little different from the that first illustration we worked on together. Um, it's a little more photorealistic, and there's a lot more gradients and blends, um, but it is still all vector. So if I go into wireframe you can see all the line work that was done. Um, now I wanted to show you this because, let me ungroup this. I just want her face. I'm gonna control copy and paste. I'm gonna drag that over off to the side so we can look at it. So this is uh, just a part of her, you know, the illustration. And I wanted to pull this off the side so I could show you. Um, let's see, let's ungroup all of it. I want to show you the gradients uh, at work here, the transparencies and the, the color gradients. I'm going to lock this. Um, so let's take a look at, uh, you can see, you can kind of see that there's line work here. And I, I sort of like my illustrations to show a little bit of that because um, to me, um, if it's too smooth, it it, it loses the, it, it, it stops looking like it was made from vector and it starts kind of looking like it's a, a bitmap type thing. Um, So let's look at this cheek part here. Now you'll notice when I pull it off of the face and pull it onto this darker background that there's some transparencies at play, but there's also some gradients at play. So here's the transparent uh, aspect of the design, and I can adjust that accordingly. Um, but it also has a gradient too. And the really neat thing about the newer version of Corel, oops, Pulled up in the wrong file. Um, 
the really neat thing about the newer version of Corel Draw is I can adjust this transparency but I can also use the interactive fill tool to adjust my gradient my fill gradient and now you have the ability to apply transparency to a given color on this gradient so I could take this and notch it down and you can see it made it even more transparent so knowing that you can apply two transparencies to one shape and it kind of opens up your ability to create some nice blends so just an example we'll create a red square and use the transparency tool to do a gradient that way now i'm going to use the interactive fill tool I'm going to do a red to white gradient. But now I'm going to take this white and make that transparent. So you can still see it's still trying to do red to white, but once it gets all the way to absolute white, it becomes transparent. So if I were to change that color to a blue, for example. So, okay. Let me zoom down a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Select blue. There we go. Um, you can see it's still transparent, but now it does that. So you can use that to your advantage when you're creating illustrations. Um, here again, here's this transparency. So you can create some cool blends and it allows uh, the ability to do something like this. Um, you know, you can have a little bit more fun with it. Uh, another thing I want to show you too, let me uh, switch back over to the, uh, the earlier illustration that we were working on. Um, I'm going to copy her photo and I'm going to bring it back into this file. Just to show you, we're going to paste that photo. Uh, there we go. And drag it down here. Um, so when I'm, if I'm creating an illustration like this, a photorealistic illustration, um, using a photo, a really cool trick um, that kind of helps that process along is if you go to bitmap, and you go to convert to bitmap and under color mode if you go to palleted 8-bit mode oh let me make sure the resolution is still nice and high instead of 72 dpi we'll keep it 300. um and make sure this is unchecked for this to work uh, you hit okay now you can start to see this is uh, not the best photo to do that. Maybe if I turn up the contrast, oops, I'm going to go bitmap, image adjustment lab. I'm going to turn up the contrast just so we can get a better uh, example of what I'm trying to show you here. Okay. All right. Now, if I go to... Uh, if I go to the uh, convert to bitmap, and now if I do the palleted, you can see that there's some kind of color breaks here. Um, and what they do is they'll help you kind of, so you'll see there's uh, a color here and a color here. So when you're creating an illustration, you can kind of use that as a guide. And you would go around and now you might want to smooth it out, but essentially that kind of helps you um, create these shapes a little easier. It's it, it uh, separates that color out enough so that you can you can use it to create all these different. Uh, shapes so and if you keep them smooth a lot of times 
you know, if you follow it exact, it's going to create this rough shape. And when you actually start adding color, the roughness is going to translate. It's going to, you're going to see a little bit of that roughness. So sometimes you want to go in and make sure that it's a little smoother and not follow the photo exactly, but use it as a guide. Um, a nice way, if you started drawing it this way and it's a little rougher than you want, there is a new tool. If you go up to where the shape tool is and you go to smooth, let me change that to one. Now let's go to point three. So you can actually use that. You click down and you kind of scrub it over a shape and it, it takes out some of the detail. So very cool tool. I use it quite a bit now uh, to help with illustration work. So yeah, there's a little, a few little tips and tricks to do um, illustration work like this. Now, another thing I want to point out is when I'm doing a design like this that incorporates illustration work and then also lettering, I like to try to um, match the lettering to the illustration. So if the illustration is uh, extremely detailed, like this one is, uh, I like to make sure that my lettering is also detailed. Um, and you start treating lettering almost like an illustration in itself. You, you stop seeing it as a font. Um, in fact, you know, I convert it to curves pretty early on and then start, you know, uh, manipulating it as if it's, um, any other illustration work. But the main thing with lettering is you want to make sure to retain the contrast. So you want to make sure that there's a, um, there's a lot of contrast between this point of the lettering and what's behind it. Um, in the sign industry, we call it a squint test. If you can squint at a design from a distance and you can still read it, then it's doing its job. And in order for a squint test to work, you need to have high contrast in, on the important parts of the lettering, which happens to be the edge of the lettering. So you want to be mindful of that whenever you're you're dealing with a lot of detailed work with lettering. Just make sure that the effects that you are adding to lettering doesn't harm the legibility and uh, it passes that squint test and then you should be fine. Um, so to kind of, again, point out the fact that in this case, this is an illustration that isn't nearly as detailed. If I go into wireframe, you can see there's a lot less at play here. It's a pretty simple illustration, all things considered. It's got some gradients in there and some blends and, um, so it's not super detailed. So the lettering also isn't extremely detailed. It, you know, it has some of these drop shadow effects and contours and, um, uh, extrudes but uh it doesn't have a lot of texture to it it's it's still pretty clean if you want to if you get a chance i've created another webinar a while back that specifically deals with doing lettering like this um, so if you're interested in the lettering part of this be sure to check out that webinar it's got a lot of um, uh, advice on how i handle things like this And here again, making sure the lettering matches the illustration um, and also understanding how the illustration is going to be used. In this case, we're dealing with a t-shirt design. I want to make sure that the design is a simple two-color design. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, uh, it can be produced on a t-shirt at, at a low cost. So if we were dealing with a multiple color design, you know, additional colors cost more. So we kept it pretty simple. And I used a freehand tool to do this. Again, I used a, um, an image of a um, racer on a motorcycle. And uh, 
we use the freehand tool to uh, create this type of illustration. Um, what helps for that, here again, I'll go back up to this photo. If we duplicate this photo here, and if I go up to Bitmap Image Adjustment Lab, oops, I have to turn it back into a non paletted image. If I go to Bitmap Image Adjustment Lab and I turn the contrast all the way up and I get rid of the saturation, uh, you can kind of use this as a guide. Um, I also have another webinar that shows a cool uh, technique for creating illustrations very quickly um, using this as a guide. So if you were interested in that video, uh, it's titled uh, Tips for Adding Extra Character to Your Designs in CorelDRAW. And you can find that on the CorelDRAW um, channel of YouTube. And uh, it, it kind of explains uh, a process of creating these high contrast photos and then converting them into vector layers um, to create kind of a cool posterized vector effect. But in this case, I just want to show you, uh, using this photo, how you might create something like this. Um, in this case, I'm essentially just creating guides. You'll notice uh, what I had to do there was the, if a bitmap is, uh, a palleted bitmap, you can't use the image adjustment lab. It won't let you. It's going to say you can't do that. So um, you have to either start with your um, RGB bitmap or CMYK bitmap or convert your palleted back to an RGB, um, which you kind of lose some quality, but in this case, it's, that's not really important. So I converted it back to an RGB bitmap, and now I can go into image adjustment lab. Crank up the contrast, pull down the saturation, and hit OK. So now these two, um, if I select both of these laying on top of each other and go to uniform, um, it gives me a pretty easy guide to work with. So I'm going to group that now. I'm just going to bring it over next to this motorcycle so you can kind of visualize how that might work. Um, so the, the boundary of this light tan color would be this boundary here. And then the boundary or the, the line work of the dark, I would follow the dark here. So just using this as a guide and then using the freehand tool to, to draw over top of it. And, you know, you go in and you, when you're using the freehand tool, you don't follow it exactly. You just kind of get it in a ballpark. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't want to come in and add all these little, you know, notches in there because it, it would make it look a little rough. But, you know, you would go in and use your shape tool to kind of clean things up and make sure your lines are real nice. And uh, that's how you create illustrations like that. Again, if you check out that other uh, tutorial, you'll see a, a similar method. Um, so be sure to check out CorelDRAW's uh, channel on YouTube. They've got a lot of tutorials, not only by myself, but by other um, CorelDRAW experts. And this is kind of in between the really um, detailed illustration and a simpler uh, you know, two color illustrations still has that kind of cartoon look, but I wanted to just show you again, uh, differences in, uh, design work that you can create using CorelDRAW. So that's about all I have for today. Um, be sure to, uh, comment below and uh, let me know what you think and let Corel know what what you think and uh, we will 
answer uh, all the questions to the best of our ability.